Welcome back to OS Bridge Coverage with Strange Love Live. I'm Cami Chaos, and right now I'm joined by Marcus J.Q. Roberts. Ooh. Marcus, where can we find you on Twitter? At Marcus Q. I'm trying to change my voice the way you did when you went live. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I have a, a different, and I don't even do it on purpose. It's been called my phone voice. It, it's completely unconscious. Did you used to have to have a phone with you in order to do it, or did you just... Yes. Oh. I was a telemarketer. Um, that was my first job ever, which is a horrible, horrible thing to have been. Uh, and then I was a receptionist and a secretary, and I found that I would be sitting at the desk, and I'd be talking to someone normally, and then I would pick up the phone, and then it would be, hi, this is Cammy with American. This is the name of the company I'm working <laughs> for. And everyone, wow, you sound completely different. Do I? No. How long were you a telemarketer? Uh, I was a telemarketer for seven months, I think, and then they had me be the receptionist instead, which was fun because then I was no longer trying to sell people things, and it's not really something I enjoy doing. But we're here to talk <laughs> about you. <laughs> okay, how long did I get away with that? Did anyone have a stopwatch going? <laughs> well, see, the, the secret is is that when we're, when we're in our studio, the show kind of really, I mean, we have the guest, and it's about them only so much as it's about me usually. So it was a good, that was a good segue into what our show is normally like. But right now we're at OS Bridge. So we've got to talk about Marcus Roberts, who was a speaker yesterday. And a microphone. Yes, I think we need to, do we need to get this a little? I no, I like cleaning over it. Okay, all right. It's good exercise. What was your, <laughs> technical problems, technical problems. I blame the pig, blame the pig. Um, maybe we could go to that. I'm not calling Marcus a pig. There's a pig on set. Hi, Pig. Pig doesn't talk, but... No, no, no Pig doesn't talk. No. Um, hey, That's Pig, do you like... That's why the pig has a mic. Well, thing? we thought, just in case it decided it wanted to talk. Oh, it would be breaking news here. Okay. Um, so I would like to request that while Pig is in the room, no one talk about B-A-C-O-N, and that the B-A-C-N boys do not enter the room. All right? Is that... I just think no. that's important. And that no one tells him what the shirt I wore this morning said. Okay. Um, and now back to Marcus. What was your talk called? Um, with Matt Ewell, we did um, Spindle, Mutilate, and Metaprogram. How far can you take it before there be dragons? Um, it was about taking your language out for a spin and doing things with it you never thought it could do and probably wish you didn't know that it could do. How far can you take it? Before there's dragons. Pretty far. Pretty far? Yeah. Is that just because the dragons aren't really around? Or, I mean, you didn't bring one, did you? Um, we had some uh, stuffed <laughs> dragons and a mechanical dragon and a stretchy rubber dragon and a whole bunch of metaphorical dragons and a two-dimensional flat dragon that was part of the cover of a book. You had a lot of dragons. I, I should have come by. Yeah. We figured <laughs> people would be dragon after lunch, so, you know, that would be fitting. Oh, so. but um um, can we expect these puns from Matt as well? Uh, no, no, we, I won the coin toss. Excellent. Or from his point of view, I guess, I, he won the coin toss. <laughs> um, how did the talk go? Um, I think it went really well. We had a really good crowd, and um, they woke up nicely. Mm -hmm. And um, they actually put up with a lot of stuff from us, yeah. um, amazingly. And um, yeah, I, th I think it went really well. So. so after your talk, you went to some more sessions. You've been going to sessions today. Uh, just a little bit, yeah. So. Yeah? Have you been enjoying yourself? Yeah, definitely. It's a very interesting. Um, though, unfortunately, I'm really sorry that I missed Bram's talk yesterday. He said he was sorry that he missed ours. I'm glad he missed ours because we were typography challenged on some of our slides. Uh -oh. And so it was nice to not, you know, oh boy, I don't want Bram to see that. But I'm really sorry that I missed his. That um, was something I was actually looking forward to. So. He recapped some of it. You were here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you give a good summation, Bram? No. No? <laughs> Are you going to give a good summation for prom? Give a good summation of our talk? Yeah. Um, so really quick, uh, do you want to blow by blow what we did? Is we brought a bunch of programs up and showed them coding samples in a bunch of different languages that didn't look like the language they were written in. So they had to guess with a quiz show format which language is code written in. Pretty much everybody got it wrong except by chance. Um, some of it was staged, some of it was rigged. We had a good time with that. We gave them candy. The person who got the most candy also got a t shirt with an incredibly witty saying on it. The incredibly witty saying was, of course, whatever they want because it was a blank t shirt and we gave them a sharpie. Um, after that, we talked about things this that people do talk. in the live. 
um, out in the wild, and we uh, showed them a bunch of code samples from things that they could get off the web, so that was really cheating, just a way to pad the time. And then we showed them some st stuff that we wrote ourselves and went into way too much gruesome detail. Um, and the only thing I think that kept them awake was the disgust with, oh my god, they did that. Um, but it actually runs, everything we showed works and runs, and um, hopefully no one will actually try it, although there is a standing <laughs> offer that people not from us, but um, if anyone uses one of the things that we mentioned in the thing, uh, somebody's offered to put their name on a billboard in Times Square um, f if they use the code in production and um, with the intent of shaming them. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a very fun talk and I think we explored some issues that are kind of out there on the edge that um, most people don't think about except maybe at 3 a.m. Um, when they really would rather be asleep. Is that when you came up with the information? No, I'm with like this content? most of the time. Oh, no, I meant at 3 a.m. Oh, so <laughs> oh, other people at 3 a.m., yeah. you yeah. all the time? Yeah, okay. more or less. We have a question from, from Verso. Did you do micro-machine commercials in the 80s? No. Oh, there is no truth to that rumor. <laughs> I was Polly the Weather Parrot, though. Um, KDB, KDKB, it's a radio station in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, mm -hmm. and on the morning show I was Polly, Polly the, weather the Weather Parrot. Parrot. Yeah. What did Polly sound like? What? Today is forecast, hot and sunny. Um, and that was regardless of what the weather was like. But it's Phoenix. That's funny in Phoenix. So. Um, you were out of the U.S. for several years. I know yes. that it's on the card. <laughs> what struck you when you came back? Um, the U.S. really changed. I don't know what you guys did with the place in our absence. <laughs> but um, what, What's the timeline? So um, uh, midsection of the Bush administration. And um, we came back and so many, <laughs> um, yeah, like all the pay phones are gone. And, yes, they are. Um, There's one take, in my neighborhood. Got to take your shoes off to get on an airplane. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I don't get lolcats. I'm sorry. I've had them explained to me several times. I don't uh, get it, it. You can't have them explained to you. That makes no sense. Yeah. And, um, and the economy sucks. I'm uh, uh -huh. just coming back and uh, I've... First time in my life, um, I'm actually having to scramble for work, and it's just it's just amazingly dead here. So, so was, you're saying without your supervision, we trashed the place? Yeah, basically. I, I think, um, and I don't know what that means. I should go away more, or, or not go <laughs> away, or just don't come back next time. Yeah. Well, yeah. If you don't come back, then we might spiral into chaos, and and then well, then I know, come back. That'd be worth it. Live in a third world country again, even more so. <laughs> we would not have no internet. And um, we might be, you know, uh, eating pigeons. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not a pigeon eater. I, I guess other people eat pigeons. I'm <laughs> <Delicious>. <laughs> it's not something that I have a dinner. They are good. Do you, do you want any recipes you want to share? <laughs> Isn't there a, a restaurant in Portland that ser serves pigeons? It's called Le Pigeon. <laughs> Le Pigeon. Le pigeon. <laughs> yeah. A lot of restaurants serve pigeons whether they want to or not, especially if they've got sidewalk, you know, stuff. And yeah. Oh, yes. No. That's it's a great quail. No, well, he served it. Never mind. I got it. It was funny. Okay. She's nice. <laughs> no, you, you don't hear the puns that happened in my house. It's all good. That, that was a good one. It took me a moment for my mind to serve pigeons. Oh! I, at first I thought we were, you know, never mind. Um, what do you do for fun, Marcus? Um... So I used to work for a computer game company, and mm -hmm. so as a consequence, I find computer games not that interesting. But lately, what I've been doing is um, Project Euler. Are you familiar with it? No. It's uh, math problems. Okay. So I've been um, going to a website and solving um, pretty tough math problems, math programming problems, mm -hmm. and um, I'm a little bit jazzed. I've, for the past month or so, been floating around the top 10 in the world and um, wrestling with somebody for the top slot in the U.S. He's been the top in the U.S. more than I have, so I've been floating around number two in the U.S., but um, they're, they're fun problems. You know, we've discussed this in Portland. It's good to be number two because you don't have to be quite so brutal, but you're still white at the top. Well, the nice thing about <laughs> math problems is you can be brutal if you want, and it does not help at all. Mm. So it's, it's totally, you know, orthogonal to brutality. Yeah. yeah. What people do for fun. Yeah. Yeah, that and also um, play with my kids and, um, and play with the hand puppet. Hello, hand puppet. Hello, pig. Yeah. Um, why did you bring pig today? 
Um, because after talking with my ta uh, talking about my talk with my son yesterday, mm -hmm. he had a couple of uh, suggestions for the next time. Okay. There's one point in the talk where um, I we set off a flash, like a photographer's flash, and I threw myself to the ground and then popped up again in a Hawaiian shirt in a different persona. And my son said, hey, Dad, you know what would be even better is if you just turned yourself into a cartoon character and pop topped up as a cartoon character. And I said, you know, that would be good, except I'm not sure how to do it. And he's like, well, I have we'll ideas. work on it, you know. Yeah. I have and thoughts on that. He said, but even so, you should carry around a hand puppet just in case. Um, and I thought, well, you know, he was right about the cartoon character, and I know how to do the hand puppet. So yeah. he gave me, this is actually my son's hand puppet. He's good at sharing. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Well, he's actually, he's good at, like, goading me on. Mm -hmm. um, that's what he's good at. Yeah. It's like, hey, Dad, how dare you do this in front of my friend's parents? So... <laughs> I like your kid. Um, has has Pig come in handy today? Um, a little bit. Um, you know, the sad part was sharing my lunch. I was actually hungry, and mm. you know, he ate more than half. But what did you have for lunch? He made a pig of himself. Um, we went over and did the carts. Oh, the the taco cart. Uh, no, over. Oh, you didn't um, have the cart that came to us. You went. No, we to went to the them. cart. We went. Yeah, and Mohammed in the mountain sort of thing. Yeah. yeah so, what cart did you go to? Uh, the sixth, I think, or seventh one from the right. That's very helpful. <laughs> I, could, I could be yeah, wrong. Ask I a think. stupid question. Um, did you enjoy your cart lunch? Were, were you downtown Hawthorne? I, I have no idea. We we I'm new to the area. We rode uh, the Max. We it's probably the downtown. Some of the, the downtown, downtown carts. Yeah. If you went on the Max, yeah. yeah. We love our food carts here. They're everywhere. Yeah. They're they're actually I've I've lived in a lot of places around the world, and this is the best cart food I think I've ever had, and Ooh. it seems the safest. Um, you know, yeah. a lot of places. If you travel around internationally, um, food cart food is, um, you know, if, if just you figure life isn't really interesting enough, go have some food cart food. Live on the edge. Yeah, or off the edge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we in Portland, we, we we like our enigmas, and and yes, to take that the you know lowbrow dining that is food carts, and then have some of our really fine chefs go ahead and and make their own yeah. and run them and, and create this huge culture of gourmet food coming out of these little wagons. Yeah. It just seems like a very good thing to do here. Yeah. My favorite one is the one that's in my neighborhood near my house, so it's in a small, is it, call, are they called a pod? Yeah. A pod. It's in a very small pod of food carts. It's called Garden State, and he makes all this uh, handheld Italian food and these <coughs> little potato dumplings with rosemary. Oh, like gnocchi? Uh, no, they're not like gnocchi. They're like little fried dumplings. They're not, they're not like, I don't know how to explain them, except that they're beautiful and they're these little fried potato rosemary that dumplings. Good. That sounds good. Yeah. When when I first saw them on the menu, I thought, why don't you just call them gnocchi? And then I got them and I understood why you don't, they're, they're not, so. Yeah, I have a soft spot for gnocchi with gorgonzola sauce. Oh, see, I usually do gnocchi with uh, mushrooms and a little bit of parmesan. Oh, that sounds good too. Yeah, so you just cook the mushrooms down and reduce it, and then you get the mushroom sauce, and then you toss the gnocchi right. in it with the parmesan. I'm hungry now, Marcus. <laughs> All right, what else do you want to tell us? What are you looking forward to about this conference? Um, well, let's say just getting to see people and getting to meet people, um, and um, I don't know. I don't have any specific expectations. I'm just kind of going with the flow and seeing what's out there. It's, uh, I've been having a great time so far. So. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Tell thank everyone you. once again where they can find you on Twitter. Um, Marcus, at Marcus Q. So, at Marcus Q. At Marcus Q. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Woo